All right, in this video, I'm going to show the uh, spawning of the enemy characters in the game, but this time with uh, the trains and the full level running. And I'll give you a little bit of the background of how that's done. And first, I set up the triggers in the editor, as you can see here. So this, that's been highlighted in red right here. Let me unselect it. That's one of the, tri the triggers. So when the character runs through that, I've set up a little script function, in this case, asset layer spawn 37, that will trigger when you cross the uh, trigger. And there's another couple of triggers over here that also have their own little script functions that get called. I'll show the script functions later in the video. And there's also some spawn points. So that's just your standard fare. But I set this up in the editor before running it in the game. And I have various types of trigger events that you can have. So if I unselect this and select that one. So there's different waves of enemy characters that, are, that will appear. Some will uh, spawn enemy characters that run towards you. Other ones are stationary. So there's a little bit of variety in what I do. So next, I'll show you the scripts that I've set up for this. So again, there's just different uh, script functions that I call. But in the next part of the video, I'll be showing you uh, the script function and how that's set up. Now I'm showing the script that gets called whenever one of those triggers is uh, intersected by the player. So again, you can see the function name that matches up with the one that I showed in the editor where I set the script trigger. And I'm using angel script to do this and I just change the behavior randomly. I generate some random number and based on the number I I decide to change how many knights I spawn. But essentially I'm just calling and generating several knights at the specific spawn points that I've um, set up in the editor. And it varies depending on uh, randomness. But it's pretty simple. I generally just call into uh, C++ routines to spawn the knights. So I just use this the scripting just as an aid. But most of the heavy lifting is done in C++. And I'll show that next. How I've bound these functions to angel script. But it's just like I, I can show you here. It's all, all the uh, functions that I use for all the different waves of enemies that can be spawned. So it just goes on and on. So I'll show the code. So the function I'll show is spawn enemy knight, which is, that's the main one anyways, that creates the knights. And here's the code. So it's just a simple C function. I wrap, I hide everything in, in here so that you don't even have to know about classes or anything. You just call this function with the right parameters and the way you go. And yeah, it's not the not the cleanest code, but this is game specific code, so I just put everything in here and it's nicely wrapped. N none of the engine knows about this code, just the scripting. So it's okay if I do like little weird magic numbers like I've done right here. And oh yeah, right here, another one. Cuz I, I when I spawn the characters, they weren't centered on the track because I didn't set the spawn points correctly and I just didn't want to go back and fix it, so I fixed it in the script. Which is okay cuz it's it this is just a little dirty function that it's it the rest of the engine doesn't know about it. And then I go into sort of the heavy C++ code that generates the knight and sets up his animation and all his positions, etc. And oh yeah, I use an entity component state system to manage the entities. So here you can see me fishing out the uh, components that are held in the en in the enemy knight. So depending on whether you want the the knight to be idle, just sitting there, or running, it'll go through and do different things. And then attachments. If you want to attach a helmet to the uh, knight, I do that here. And again, it's a component that's within the entity, so I fish it out. And if it's if the component's vis available in the entity, then I, I set up the uh, helmet to be visible, just to have a little bit of variety. 
So here, let me see where I registered the function. I guess we'll show that next. Yeah, here it is. So here I'm using angel script to set up the function. So to bind it to the C routine. So this is the one that you'll be calling in your script. So that'll be the, that's the function prototype. And then it'll go and call the actual C function once I've done the binding or registering. And I support, I support the native calling convention for the uh, C routines. And if not, I'll just use the generic version depending on what platform's running. So it's pretty simple. And that's why I like AngelScript. It's really easy to bind your C code to the, to the scripts. So that's why I chose AngelScript. And next I'll show th this actually running in the game, which is probably what everyone wants to see anyways. So here's some more moving characters and you can also shoot them. That's another part of the uh, gameplay for the player. And eventually you'll get some sort of power up or some sort of prize if you do that. So I'll just show more examples of the scripts being triggered by the game character. Okay, here are some stationary characters, and I'll clear a path by shooting them. They also shoot back, by the way, so sometimes you've got to be on your toes. Here's some more stationary characters. Oh, I got hit. So that's what I was saying about uh, you've got to be on your toes. Sometimes they'll shoot projectiles at you, so it's just another thing you need to look out for. But at least you can see some of the idle animations that these characters play. So uh, I'll try and do some more variations for these waves and uh, then I'll just wrap it up. Here's some more stationary characters. And again, let's see if I can hit all of them. Yeah. So again, you'll get some sort of power up when you do that. Here's some more space out characters in there. I managed to dodge an attack. See, there's another one I can dodge. So that's sort of what you have to do in order to uh, escape that, either duck or move out of the way. So here's a mass of characters that are running towards you. And here I show what happens if uh, you bump into them. They just fall backwards and go into their idle animations. I'll do a final run, hopefully with uh, more characters that are spaced out. And uh, then I'll just finish this video. Here's another wave of characters running through. And this time I'll bump into them just to see the load that the uh, engine can handle. And as you can see, I can have several characters running at the same time and at 60 frames a second. And uh, so this will be the final run I show. Next video, I'll be showing the moving trains in the it, with the full game with all the levels. And also there will probably be some new animations that I'll be showing. But uh, that'll be the next video. Thanks and bye.